Hi everybody, it's Janine of Janine Scribbles and today I would like to show you the uppercase typewriter font. Um, I've taken a sheet of my calligraphy practice pad and placed a sheet of tracing paper on top of it and um, added to the uh, calligraphy grid that's on the paper. I've added three uh, lines to mark out uh, the cap height, uh, the height of uh, the uppercase letters. So I will be using uh, this space, this is the baseline, and then this is the cap line. So all the letters will be placed between uh, these lines. And uh, for some of the letters I make little um, dots to mark where, where the, the lines uh, will end up so that, uh, that you can make nice uh, straight uh, lines. And I, I'm trying to see where I can start so as many of the letters will fit in the image and to start with the A I make three little dots uh, two on uh, the baseline one on the, on the right one on the left where these uh, the grid lines meet and then uh, one in the middle um, on, uh, on the cap line and then the idea is that you draw, try and draw straight lines to form a nice and straight A. Then for the B, the stem. And then a little bit above halfway uh, of the stem, I make a, a tiny mark. To indicate where uh, the balls, the two balls that are stacked on top of each other, uh, meet to form the B. So I do the bottom ball first, then the top, and the top ball is just a tiny bit less white uh, than the bottom ball, and I follow the. Um, the cap line and the baseline to make the shape as much as possible and this is also um, as, as horizontal as possible before you move into uh, the rounded shape to, to make the balls. Then for the C, the serif, the oval shape, now this is because I'm, I'm writing in an angle that I'm not used to um <laughs> the uh, natural oval shape that I'm, I'm I usually try to make gets a bit wonky but this is just a, a, a quite a straight uh, oval shape not not egg like so this is not not pointy and smaller than than the bottom this should be about as wide then the stem of the D uh, following the baseline and the cap line as far as possible to make for this nice squarish typewriterish uh, D. The stem of the E. The bars and then the little T-shaped crossbar. The F is of course very similar to the E, only with this little foot. Whoops, keep it straight. And then this little T uh, again to, to mark this um, uh, this bar. Then for the G, about uh, the C shape, and I, I drag this, uh, this part, I dra try to drag up a little bit further so that it follows this uh, vertical line a little bit so that you get a nice clear G shape and put the crossbar on top of that and for the H following the two vertical lines of the grid I'm sorry the, the sunlight is moving in and out so the light quality won't be too uh, too great for this video but and that is that's the H the I 
and you see that the simplest of letters uh, get the most wonky and wobbly just because you're doing these um, <laughs> these few lines that, that make up the whole letter. <laughs> there's, there's nothing to hide. So for the J, as you can see, I sometimes start here, uh, left side, bottom, moving up. And sometimes I start here uh, on the right side, moving down. And it's, I don't know why. It's not a particular technique you should follow. It's just some of my writing quirks, I, uh, I imagine. Then the K. Now this um, this this arm of the K uh, starts a little bit above the middle of of the stem, and then uh, about one third in you start uh, uh, the leg, so the leg reaching out, and then adding the serifs to uh, to complete it. And I'll start the L here. Oops. Just following the grid line from the um, uh, the cap line to the base line, and then one square little serif here, not dropping below the base line, and a uh, little uh, top serif there. Then for the M, I'm making my support marks again, and then for the a lowest point in the middle, I'm making a dot there, so that I can make a nice tight, tight angled M. And then these serifs don't uh, reach beyond where um, these lines meet, so this is like um, uh, where three uh, paths uh, meet and this serif does not extend there and this serif does not extend from that point and the same goes for the top of the N whoops oh. now this I did this automatically and it went wrong, uh, so I'll try to do my N again. So you see, I uh, even though I, I do these alphabets regularly, I make mistakes just as often. And here you can see I, I slipped with this line. I can probably get away with it by dragging this down a bit, but this should be just a little bit higher than it is here. Now as you can see, I started this serif. I started here and tried to drag it out, but actually it should be like this. So if you're a nitpicker like me, <laughs> you start all over again. Then for the O. Nice oval O. Uh, I usually try to do uh, top left, down, top, right, down, to get a nice oval shape, which is um, uh, as, as nice and regular as possible. Doesn't always happen, of course, but you can try. Then for the P, I just as with the D, I make a little support uh, mark where I want the bow of the P to end up. So these, this bend here should be just as um, just as angled as this bend here. So you get this nice um, regular bowl shape uh, P. Then the Q. Whoops, making a mess of it. I'll do it over because otherwise you can't make out the, uh, so I'll cross it out, I'll cross this N out. So if you use this uh, video as a, as a cheat sheet or a practice sheet, I should say, um, 
then um, well, starting with the R, now I'm getting all carried away. Um, then you know which uh, which of the letters are the, the right ones. Trying the Q again. And then this uh, nice little tail, which has like an, an S, like a tepid S shape, which which uh, starts here in the, um, um, approximately, if you were to draw a line from uh, the lower uh, left corner to uh, to the, the, the oval of the Q, then this is where the, the tail starts. And then uh, moving in with this uh, mirrored, a tepid S-like uh, shape moving out towards um, this grid line so that you get a nice tight Q. Now I can start with the R again making a little support mark to where the, the ball of the R ideally is supposed to end up so this is like the P shape and then to give the R it's extra leg. It's, this is also like a, a very tepid S-like shape attached to the bowl of the of the R to make it uh, stand on uh, on two legs. Then the S. Nice regular S. This band should be about the same height as, as this uh, should be so it's a, a very regular s and um, probably it could be could be flipped or um, um, or, or moved about and it would be uh, exactly the same uh, shape now for the t oh. Very fat crossbar there. Then the U. As you notice, the um, the lowercase uh, U has a little leg here with a support serif, but the uppercase U is just this um, this sausage-like shape. Um, which is the, the lines here are straight, so they're not bending in. So straight lines and the, the bend, and then the, the top uh, serifs. Then for the V, I'll make a couple of support marks again. And the W, just to get me started, these, whoa. <laughs> Something irregular beneath my sheet that I'm tripping on with my nib. And this one is a bit wide, but you get the picture. So the W is um, an unfinished V and a complete V attached to that. And this, this angle is just a bit too wide, so you get this... this W that's that's slightly out of proportion and um, well you can um, sometimes it's nice to have one one letter that's that's just a bit out of uh, out of sync um, but with this style I like to to keep all the letters about uh, in the to to have them have the same proportion I'll try to do it again. Yes, this is better. So as you can see, this this angle is just a just a tad too wide, and I like those these two angles here to have the same um, the same width. So this one is a bit. I'll cross this one out. This one is a bit uh, better, I think. Um, so you have this unfinished uh, V, complete V attached to that to make the W. And then. The X just like the I and the L very stressful letter because of those very 
tight straight lines and then for the Y making a couple of support marks again to make it like a, a dot trace uh, drawing the Z or Z depending where you are another wobbly line but just to indicate that this is a very um, uh, regular C so that the, um, the, the the top and the bottom uh, are are just uh, the same width and the um, the serifs are the same uh, same height I've got a little something on the end of my nib and I'll try to do the numerals as well for you and um, starting with the zero the O which is when you look at the, the lowercase O uh, the letter O that would fill um, the whole of this uh, this this surface this grid surface um, the zero is a bit more narrow to make it uh, to, to distinguish it from uh, from the, the letter O then the one to distinguish the one from the I um, this little um, this little uh, flip here is uh, just um, uh, completely horizontal so where the eye would have the serif moving in uh, in an angle this is horizontal then the two now the two is is a matter of practice it's just um starting i think about a third uh below the x height moving up just slightly along this vertical line moving in uh, for the bend then following uh, this horizontal uh, the x height moving in for this bend then making this nice um this nice two like uh, shape <laughs> i guess it is and then when you hit uh, the lower left um, of the grid you move up again with this very tepid s like shape again a mirrored s and then making a little ball to uh, to finish um, um, the two there and for the three This nice angular uh, top of the three, moving in with a, a very tepid bend, and then um, this this nib this does this uh, uh, from itself. When you lift it off the paper, it leaves this nice little ball of ink at the end of your at the tail of your um, of your uh, ink line. So I like it very much uh, for that reason. And um, if your uh, nib or ink doesn't do that, then you can always draw a little ball, um, of course. Then the four, just this, the angle and the leg and the serif to stand on. And the five, which is, uh, has the same tepid um a little bend like the the three does and an upright so vertical um dash here and a horizontal dash there and then the six i like to to uh, give this um, this top arm of the six a very uh gentle angle i don't draw it down so you can uh, clearly distinguish between uh, the six and uh, and the eight if you were to drop this down too low and the ink lines would uh, melt together then you can um, have problems in distinguishing between uh, the six and uh, and the eight now for the seven little serif and this this is like like the two you have to do just practice this 
this is like tepid s like shape moving up moving down flipping up just a little bit and then curving in towards uh, the baseline the eight I actually like to make this eight like a figure eight so not two balls uh, stuck on top of each other but starting here and then making the uh, the eight like um, a figure just in, in one motion so not two balls but one motion then a nine And the nine is just an upside down six, albeit that this um, uh, this this circular shape of the nine is just a bit wider, I guess, just a bit uh, a bit bigger than um, the bottom part of the six to make them also uh, distinguishable. So the, the nine is is a bit more. Uh, the eye is a bit more uh, fatter than uh, than this part of the six. Then let's throw in a couple of punctuation marks. So exclamation mark. If you notice on the typewriter, exclamation mark is a bit wider on top than at the bottom. So I made the top just. I exaggerated a bit here, but just made it a bit wider then for the question mark I start with a little ball just a little bit um, in from um, from the left um, support uh, grid uh, line and um, it sits on top of uh, the X height moving in with this nice hook shape and then this, this last bit of the tail should be quite vertical. And then for the always very tricky ampersand. Now what I do is I follow this, um, um, this axis uh, as a support line to start the, uh, the ampersand. So I start at the um, bottom right corner, move up to the um, top left corner move in and as you can see these lines um, they cross each other to form squares on either side of, um, um, of where the lines uh, meet so this is it's it's actually it's it's really a cross uh, so that's something to uh, to help you um, make a nice and tight ampersand and then these uh, little bow-like, uh, ball-like, um, like uh, serifs that slightly point towards each other. And then you have your uh, your ampersand. So well, uh, <laughs> as you see, I uh, I don't do it all uh, perfectly uh, in one uh, fell swoop as well. Uh, luckily. Um, so I hope this uh, this video uh, will demonstrate you um, how the letters are formed um, and uh, the numerals and uh, and a couple of, uh, of the punctuation uh, marks. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, drop them in the comment line. And um, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, enjoy practicing. Bye bye.